Good morning everybody. Since a lot of you have been asking for a mobility and stretching tutorial, here are some tips on what we do to help improve our stretching. Shall we get started? We are by no means professionals, no doctors, no physiotherapists. But I am a doctor. Chris is a doctor. Oh, of course, <laughs> trust me. The doctor of primp. But obviously we've got more than 10 years of uh, professional experience as athletes. So we've got a good knowledge of what helps us in stretching. Today we want to show you a few stretches and mobility exercises that helped us in our career as professional climbers. I'll start with a unusual stretching routine that I do for warm up. And then later Chris will dive deeper into the differences between active and passive stretching. First of all, when we talk about stretching, a lot of people ask things like, ah, what's better, uh, passive, active, dynamic stretching? And to make something clear, in my eyes, is um, when we go to climbing and we talk about active and passive stretching, it makes sense to provide uh, a passive motion range um, before, you, before you can um, use it actively, right? For example, uh, when I stand on a volume like here and I want to took my uh, second foot over here to this foothold and I don't have this range of, uh, of motion um, and, but, I, but I'm uh, fighting and, and doing this uh, and things happen like this uh, I'm hurting myself. There's a high uh, potential for, for injuries and, and uh, it makes sense to go into this kind of motion in a secured way, in a passive way, before I work uh, in an active way. Make sense? Yeah, absolutely makes sense. Yeah. Ah, Chris! So that means we have to get passive mobility before we get active mobility. Is that correct? I think so. I think so too. We are no doctors, so... We, I mean, yeah. we have no fucking clue, but, <laughs> <laughs> but this is what we think is the case. It makes absolutely sense to stretch because you have just more possibilities in climbing. You can get close to the wall. You can put he looks up here or up here. <laughs> uh, you can make sections a lot easier by just putting your foot somewhere over there and finding a good rest position. And it'll just make climbing. You're standing on the ground. Yeah. It's for spectators, for them to like understand what benefits it looks really weird with the stretching foot. has. So, you know, I mean, just imagine there would be a foothold where the ground is and there would be another foothold where my foot is. Then I would be standing in no hand rest, not on the ground. I would hang with one arm. Okay, you're Super right. pumped. Just go back and watch our one arm tutorial video. It's anyway more important than stretching. <laughs> <laughs> You'll find it here. <laughs> I usually start uh, my climbing session with this stretch. I call it the taping stretch because you can easily lean on your forearms, start taping and also stretch by the way, which I think is a, a very good stretch just to improve more general hip mobility. And at some point you should be able to get down like this. At some point. At some point. I never came to this point. I know, but this is the goal. Or to this point. Or to this point. Yeah, that's already pretty good. What are you doing exactly there? That is part of my yoga warm up routine. You just want to be. I just want to be close to my foot because I love yeah. it so much. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because he's doing a great work, right? <laughs> he's doing great work, you know, my foot. Standing on small footholds, getting me all the heel carrying you I want. all the time, carrying me and my backpack. That's true. Yeah, very good. You can also yeah put your elbow around your leg like this. That's perfect. This, for example, I think is very very important to get your foot high up on a slab without your butt going backwards. You will also, show this later in the wall, right? I'll show this okay. later. Not only on the slab, but also on a steep roof or a steep wall that can be very very important and useful 
the pigeon pose, also called the Japanese phone stretch, because I feel like the whole Japanese team is sitting around like this with phones sometimes. Well, at least that's what they used to. Very good stretch for uh, hip mobility, flexibility on the outside. I think that's good for any uh, for any climber. I just feel comfortable doing it. Also helpful for climbing, but also just to open up, loosen up the glutes and the hips and make everything more mobile. I usually stretch a lot as a warm-up, just because I feel more mobile. People say that you lose power if you're stretching for a long time, and that might even be true. But, to be honest, I mean, it's legs and who needs power in the legs anyways when they go climbing. We're not sprinters, so we can... Ah, oh, we are not sprinters. I mean, ev everybody except Chris. Chris is a sprinter, yeah. but the rest of us, we can... <laughs> also climb like a sprinter. <laughs> <laughs> Chris climbs like a sprinter, that's true. We can give a little bit of power. It looks a bit strange. No, 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 not even. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes you have to do strange things to get to the goal, you know, you, you know what I mean. That's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the frog stretch. Very important to open up the hips. Very important for slaps, for steep walls, to sit on your heelogs, which we don't do very often because it's painful in the knees, but helpful for climbing for sure. And it's also useful for another And it sports. can be useful in other sports too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do you just uh, stretch your lower part when you start to climb? <coughs> yeah. Yes, only lower part. No, 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 not only lower part. <laughs> we also stretch upper part, of course. Shoulders, chest and so on, very important for climbing because through the climbing everything gets a bit tighter. We'll show you more in the future, but your spine and the flexibility of your spine is also very important. And Chris is very eager to show you an exercise how to keep your spine flexible. So in my opinion it's very important to have a very flexible spine because uh, the spine has a great impact. Uh, for example for your shoulder um, mobility, I can show you in a little way, like uh, sitting down here, uh, a little to sit, and you do kind of a rounded back or cat back, like this, and you try to reach some simulated hold behind your head. Yeah, it's nearly impossible to 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 have a kind of range of motion here, right? Okay, so when you straighten up your spine, it's so much more easier to reach something behind your head yeah so and when we go into the wall when you climb it looks like this advertising pencil so when it comes to climbing yeah it's the same like when i'm uh, oh, the holes are so bad here yeah guess, <laughs> guess who did the setting what guess who did the setting me yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe we have to move to this one. <laughs> this is also pretty shitty holes here, huh? Should I move to the third degree wall? <laughs> so why did we go to the third degree wall? Because I don't find any good hold in the other walls we have. <laughs> okay, just show your spine mobility thing. Okay. So if we have an um, inflexible spine, it's uh, it will have a bad impact on our climbing, yeah, you know, like this. So you're here like this, and you try to reach something here. Uh, you have a shitty range of motion, right? So, but if you straighten up like this, yeah, I can move to the moon. <laughs> so Chris, what would you do then? So yeah, good question. Um, generally, it's it's a good idea to to work on your flex. Ability. Ah, stretching you mean? Not, I wouldn't call it stretching, I would call it mobility training, maybe? Yeah, that are things like, um, like, like twisting you, yeah? Like you control your twisting, like things like this, yeah? Like you're twisting your body. Also some yoga positions, uh, you know? 
maybe you guys know this <laughs> kind of stuff. This is really good, also for your spine. I like to work with weights sometimes. That's a pretty cool exercise. You like to work with weights? <laughs> Some, sometimes. <laughs> How many kilos of this? I think um, 70. Is that even heavy enough? Uh, no. So, normally I will use between 30 and 40 kilos. Like, kind of a lot of weight. And it's about your upper spine. Yeah? And it's about this. You control your hips and everything. This part of the body is not moving. And you just separate your body, your body in this position here. And the, the exercises just to move with your spine and the upper part. Control this range of mo motion. Yeah. So this is a great exercise for mobility. For your spine mobility sidewards. So back to this. Um, back to the roots. Yeah, back to roots. To the thing I. Yes. <laughs> now, okay. The reason why Alex took off his shirt now is um, because, because now we're mansplaining. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, it's uh, because we just want to show you the, the part of the body exactly, and I think it's yeah. You will better see now. So I think the most one of the exercises that everybody. Uh, learns first when it's about spine mobility is like the cat and cow exercise we'll just call it the cat and cow exercise so like go up with your spine this is the cow right i think this is the cat <laughs> okay what is it about here what this are you doing just a uh, to mobilize the spine so you're trying to go from the one extreme into the other from Arching your back as much as possible while this is as much as possible. <laughs> yes, I know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I have a short torso, that's why it's harder, yeah? Okay. <laughs> to the other extreme. Yeah. And to bend your spine and your upper back as so much as possible. You really want to work in this part. Here. Yes. Uh, yeah. Really trying to push your hand up, but it's not possible. Anymore. Okay. Try to push me. Oh, a little bit. Okay. And go down. Just do that. When do, would you do that? For the warm up, right? I would do that for the warm up. I feel like it's always nice to feel loose while you're on the wall. So if you do the mobilization part before climbing, it's always good. We have a very complex system in our body. So we have the so called muscle spindle, it's a um, little organ. So if you do this, uh, dynamic stretching, we give some information to the muscle spindle. Um, the muscle spindle got uh, simulated and gives this information of the, of the range of motion to our central nerve system. So, and why is this pretty cool? This is pretty cool because our brain knows where we want to work before we start with the real work. So it's kind of like an alarm for your muscles that this is Something this is going to happen. happen, right, yeah. Hmm. And you can do it like, I mean, be, be smart, you can, you can do it in every kind of range of motion. You know, like, you can also do it with your, with your forearms here, like, going up to the end of the motion here, going a little bit backward, and going into the stretch. Also with, uh, with twisting, yeah. So, here is the stop, going a little bit backward, and working at this range of motion here. Mm, that's why people do it with the butterfly legs all the time. Yeah. We yeah. both love pull-ups. Yes. Why are we stretching then? I don't have an answer for this, Chris, unfortunately. But I think sometimes it does help in climbing and all the stretching. The active and the passive stretching also helps you in the wall. A little short example. Show me. You are, you have two holes yeah. and they are not good enough cut loose and you have a super low foothold with one foot and you have to get up your left right foot very high to be able to do the next move if you'd not be able to do that pass uh, actively you'd just be like getting your foot up to here but if you can actually get your foot up to here without having to cut loose you can then do that oh my god that's great is there another thing like is that the only kind of motion we have in climbing that's not the only kind of motion okay let's for example just say 
you have a blank wall. There's no holes here. You have, <laughs> you, have, you, you have not even a top hole. You have not even a top hole. You have two... No, it's too shitty. Two shitty holes. We'll take this one. And one foothold is very far on the left side. Yes. And in order to do the next move, you have to get your second foot on the wall because the holes are so bad. You know? Are so bad. So bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you are flexible, you will get both feet on the wall like that. Yeah, it looks awesome. If you're not flexible, you will not be able to do that. So Alex, it was this foothold? Yeah. And, and this? Yeah. <laughs> This is a very good example. Alter! <laughs> mm. <Ha. laughs> yeah, okay, but I think we all see the difference. Yeah. You know, when you're flexible, you can't only hook just here. You can also hook here. Oh. Or here at the same time. Yeah. Or here. And having barbecue. Or here. Oh yeah. Uh huh. You can hook everywhere. Okay. Everywhere. You can also hook up there and still stand down here. Yeah. Uh. It's crazy. <laughs> awesome. See, yeah. many okay. more possibilities. So to make it short, it helps you climb. It helps better, you climb. right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Talking about internal and external rotation, of course, for climbing. You know, this is important, but also that. Yeah, so like an internal rotation. Yeah, the internal rotation. Yeah, also external, of yeah. course. Yeah. So you sit on a hillock, for example, or you do a crazy drop knee. Also very important. And there are also some exercises we'll show you for active stretching of the inside rotation. So what's your exercise? Uh, my exercise, this is an exercise I do for now some years uh, which helped me a lot for my hip uh, flexibility. Um, talking about the hip, for me the hip is one of the most important parts of the body in climbing. Um, yeah, it's a very complex joint and a very large joint. The hip also um, should be trained in many motions as possible. Um, yeah, it's a ball and socket joint also and I will show you the exercise and then I show you why this has a great impact on climbing, in my opinion, as a doctor and professor. <laughs> a professor. <laughs> so we start in a deep squat, yeah, uh, here's on the ground, yeah, and turn the right knee into inward, uh, in an inward rotation, yeah, to the ground, so also the left. And now we sit in a 90-90 position. So with the right hand now on the shin, this hand now provides your support. I now want to target uh, inward rotated um, motion with my, in the hip here, with my foot. That means um, I try to lift up this foot from the ground. It's just a little range of motion. If you are strong in this exercise, you can be more straighten up. If you're not so good, you lean a little bit forward and actively try to lift this foot up. Right? So, um, how often you do this? You can do this about, I would say, 10 up to 15 times. If I break, do it in, yeah, six times in a row, something like this. This is kind of an active exercise. Sitting in this 90-90 uh, position, we can also use this position to um, exercise an external rotation. Our goal is to um, lift the foot in this position. So that means it looks like this. Got it? Got it. Okay, you know why I'm doing this? No. What now? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is Chiara, my wife. I asked her to show us her favorite exercise, I would say. Yeah. Um, you do it now for several years, right? Yes. 
and this, why? This was the, the exercise I had like the most impact of and this is the reason why I love it so much because it really helps me a lot for my climbing and my hips get closer to the wall as closer your hips are to the wall and the less you have to pull and the less you have to hold ah, that's the trick <laughs> yeah that's the trick <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> you should more listen to myself. that's true yeah okay and and how is this exercise um, going it's uh it's a yoga exercise yeah so i think the most of the people will know this as a yoga exercise. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, definitely. We will call it the butterfly. Yeah. Because for some reason, you will show. Yeah, you sit on the ground, bring your soles together, reach with your, with your hands over your feet, and then um, you clasp your hands and bring like your knees to the ground. Okay. And it's normal that your knees are touching the ground? No. Yeah, I, I think it. I'm not touching the ground. Yeah, I think it uh, needs some uh, exercise, but it's very important to to try to, um, <laughs> to make your back very straight. So it's important to straighten up. Yes, mm -hmm. to straighten up, and then yeah. you can lay down or something okay. like this. Okay. But, but you, uh, we want to show you kind of an active exercise. Yeah, and now. you can move your knees. If you're not flexible enough, you can make like this. Like a butterfly. Like a butterfly, yeah. And this is where it gets his name off. And yeah. Ta-da! Yeah, butterfly is... Uh, Don't make sound like this? No, no but I heard them you like in uh, the garden. Yeah, maybe when you took some drugs, but... So? <laughs> <laughs> So when do you use this position we talking about? Normally for resting, like, like this? for resting like this, or if you have very small um, finger holes. So it's uh, really important to come really close to the wall. Yeah, you as close as your hips are to the wall, the less you have to pull and the less you have to hold the holes. That makes sense. Yeah, definitely. This was a very short insight into uh, stretching, our stretching routine, passive and active mobility. Of course, it was uh, not uh, very long, it was super brief. But what we would like to know from you is, did you enjoy it? Was it too messy? Would you want a uh, full on stretching routine that you can uh, follow through while we're guiding? Or is there any other things you would like to know about stretching, about other exercises? Um, yeah, I want to add something, uh, maybe now it's a little bit confusing for you guys, what are you doing when? Um, I would say, as I'm speaking for you now, Alex, I think you're doing the, the passive stretching most of the time uh, before the training starts, right? Correct. Um, or in the evening. Yeah. Yeah. To calm down, to cool down a little bit, also for the nerve system, right? Okay. So, and I do like kind of dynamic stuff and directly in front of climbing. Um, these active stretching things, I would say you have to give them an extra training. So maybe you can add it partly to your training routine, but um, for example, I do this in an extra training. And you know, social media is a great place for stretching. So if you are watching Netflix, if you are scrolling mindlessly on Instagram, sit down on your ground at home on your carpet and stretch. It helps. Yeah, also while driving with the car. And I just see you all the time with your leg above your head <laughs> driving. You know, when you're riding your bicycle, when you're driving your car, in the metro, in the train, yeah, perfect. Also, try to in the deal airplane. with the stair wheel. Where does the stretch? Your... In the airplane, on the airplane, between the airplanes. Yeah. You can also use your feet to use your stair wheel, right? Yeah. While driving. I mean, you can. On the German your autobahn with 300. Use your mind. <laughs> use your brain. Yeah. For, for driving, and then you have 
your arms and legs free for stretching. You have no problems anymore. <laughs>